Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Good morning and welcome to Trinity Church here in Southport, Connecticut. I'm the Reverend Peggy Hodgkins, the rector, and I'm so pleased that you can join us today for this service of morning prayer. We begin morning prayer each day with remembering a saint of the day, and today our saint is in Lesser Feasts and Fasts is Thomas Aquinas, who was priest and friar in the 1200s. Who was Thomas Aquinas? Perhaps the greatest theologian of the high Middle Ages, and next to Augustine, perhaps the greatest theologian in the history of Western Christianity. He was born into a noble Italian family, probably in 1225, and entered the new Dominican order of preachers and soon became an outstanding teacher in an age of intellectual ferment. <clears throat> <coughs> Perceiving the challenges that the recent rediscovery of Aristotle's works might entail for traditional Catholic doctrine, especially in, in its emphasis upon empirical knowledge derived from reason and sense, perception, independent of faith and revelation, Thomas asserted that reason and revelation are in basic harmony. Grace, revelation, he said, is not the denial of nature, which is reason, but the perfection of it. This synthesis Thomas accomplished in his greatest works, the Summa Theologica and the Summa Contra Gentiles, which even today continue to exercise profound influence on Christian thought and philosophy. He was considered to be a bold thinker, even a radical, and certain aspects of his thought were condemned by the ecclesiastical authorities. His canonization, though, on July 18, 1323, vindicated him. Thomas understood God's disclosure of his name in Exodus 3, verse 14, I am who I am, to mean that God is being, the ultimate reality from which everything else derives its being. And so today we remember Thomas, who died in 1274, just under 50 years of age. In 1369, his remains were transferred to Toulouse. In addition to his many theological writings, he also composed many Eucharistic hymns, and I think you will probably recognize them. Now my tongue, the mystery telling, which is it was such a beautiful song in our hymnal. Almighty God, you have enriched your church with the singular learning and holiness of your servant, Thomas Aquinas. Enlighten us more and more, we pray, by the disciplined thinking and teaching of Christian scholars, and deepen our devotion by the example of saintly lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And now let us turn to the Book of Common Prayer, page 79. You can also find the Book of Common Prayer online, bcponline.org. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor, saying together, Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia.
The Lord has shown forth his glory. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Our psalm appointed for today is Psalm 60, found on page 667. O oh God, you have cast us off and broken us. You have been angry. O oh, take us back to you again. You have shaken the earth and split it open. Repair the cracks in it, for it totters. You have made your people no hardship. You have given us wine that makes us stagger. You have set up a banner for those who fear you to be a refuge from the power of the bow. Save us by your right hand and answer us that those who are dear to you may be delivered. God spoke from his holy place and said, I will exalt and parcel out Shechem. I will divide the valley of Succoth. Gilead is mine and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim is my helmet and Judah my scepter. Moab is my washbasin and Edom I throw down my sandal to claim it and over Philistia will I shout in triumph. Who will lead me in the strong city? Who will bring me into Edom? Have you not cast us off, O God? You no longer go out, O God, with our armies. Grant us your help against the enemy, for vain is the help of man. With God we will do valiant deeds, and he shall tread our enemies underfoot. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. We turn to our reading for today, which is a reading from the Gospel according to Mark. The apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a lonely place and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a lonely place by themselves. Now many saw them going and knew them, and they ran there on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great throng, and he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a lonely place, and the hour is now late. Send them away to go into the country, and villages round about, and buy themselves something to eat. But he said to them, You give them something to eat. And they said to him, Shall we go and buy two hundred denarii worth of bread, and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves have you? Go and see. And when they found out, they said, Five and two fish. And then he commanded them all to sit down by companies upon the green grass. So they sat down in groups by hundreds and by fifties. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces of the fish. And those who ate the loaves were five thousand people. Immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side to Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd. 
And after he had taken leave of them, he went up to the mountain to pray. And so let us say together the canticle found in your prayer book on page 19, the Song of the Redeemed. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great things are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth. O king of all the ages, who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today, as we remember Thomas Aquinas, who recognized the the nature of God as being essa, or or life, life life-giving, the life-givingness of a God whose very name is I am that I am, We think about uh, Jesus in the gospel today, giving people something to eat, being life-giving. At first, we see Jesus in this passage from Mark 6, verse 30 to 46, saying, I need to take a rest and go away, and I'm going to help you disciples also to come and rest from your labors. But the crowds surround him, and he realizes He has compassion on them. He realizes he is needed once again. His rest must be delayed. But at the end of the story, he does go and rest up on the mountain to pray. So what is it about uh, this miracle, the feeding of the 5,000, that is so amazing? Some might say that it doesn't have to be a miracle for people to turn to one another and share what's already in their pockets. And perhaps Jesus is helping us realize we already have within us what it takes to be life-giving to one another. And I'm wondering, as you go out into your day today, how can you be life-giving through the power of Christ working in you towards other people? Um, That's something I'll be praying about today, and I hope you do too. Thanks be to God. We'll turn now to the prayers on page 97. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. And we'll begin with the contemporary Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Suffrages B. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you, we praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. On this Thursday morning, We pray the collect for guidance. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit 
that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. And now let us pray for those in need and offer our intercessions and thanksgivings. We pray for those on Trinity's prayer list, for Ted Pratt, for Patria Swan, Peter Swan, Joyce Miller, Robert, Lillian, Lee, Whitney, Janet, John Rogers, and Philip, and any others you may now name at this time. And we pray for the departed, especially all those who have died from coronavirus. We pray for those who are helping others with this pandemic, those on front line of the hospitals and medical centers, in grocery stores and public places, serving others. We pray that you would protect our loved ones from this dread disease and help us to, as a society, to administer quickly and carefully the vaccines that will protect us. Lord, we pray for an end to this pandemic and to the suffering that it has caused, and we pray that we might learn through this this time of the pandemic how to serve you more fully. And now I invite us to enter into a time of silence for a couple of minutes. At the ringing of the bell, we'll begin and end the quiet time. You might ask, how is God speaking to you? What is the Spirit saying to the church? We close our service with the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you this day and always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a great day.
Bye.